Matthias Tormut. Yeah. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Inia. Thank you. You're welcome. It's good to be here. It's good, good to, to have here. you here. Yeah. I hope you don't mind. I bailed on the last name. <laughs> no, like, that's okay. I, like, I don't care about Bradley, my family. Bradley Matthiasen. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. I yeah. Like, oh, fuck. You nailed it. <laughs> yeah. Matthiasen, like I'm this Norrland god. Mat- Matthias Matthiasen. It's got a yeah. nice ring to it. Oh, it does. It does. Norrland god with scoliosis. <laughs> that's right. My back is crooked. My mind is straight. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever that means, yeah. I don't stand by it. Dude, you have the straightest by mind it, ever. You're standing by it. Yeah. Hey, so how's uh, how's everything going with Vravel and you guys? What are you, is it a busy summer? I saw you killing it at Salt. Yeah, yeah. We did our show Gullungen at the uh, Oslo Humor Festival. Yeah. And it went really, really well. You really sold out, right? Well. Yeah, yeah, twice. twice. Really? Yeah. Yeah. You did t- wow, you did two shows at the Humor Festival? No. No. <laughs> no, okay. Well, we 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 first had, you know, the, the pyramid, like uh, the small one. Yeah. And then we sold out. It was like a uh, hundred, I think, a yeah. people. Yeah. A room for in there. And then we sold out the next one. Which was the uh, the big stage? It's like 180, I think. Yeah, something like that. It's a long huse. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. my favorite. Yeah, it's really great. It's yeah. really great atmosphere. But because uh, uh, Pyramid is like 100, and then we sold down like two days or three days or something yeah. like that. Really, we're the fast. first show at the uh, Humor Festival and that sold out. We're really happy about that. Yeah. And then they just told us uh, we're gonna move you to Long Husa because mm. uh, more people want to see the show. Yeah. And then uh, we sold out again. Yeah, that was yeah. fun. That was, that was fun. real fun, and I was really nervous about moving to Longhuse, the yeah. big stage, because Turmo uh, he he was like, we should totally do that. Would be really cool and and all that, you know, that jazz. And mm. I was like, oh, I don't know, man. Isn't it better to have a full pyramid than not, you know, sell out uh, Longhuse? Yeah. But then he talked me into it. I'm really happy with it. Yeah, that's it was good. So fun. Yeah. yeah, you know what I like. What I like thinking is like, what if it all just works out? You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? Like, what if like, what if we move it and it all just works out? Like, yeah. imagine if that happens. Wouldn't yeah. that be cool? And when it does, you're like, huh, wow. But I understand the hesitancy because you're like, you know what? At least we sold out here. It's gonna be epic, packed yeah. house. But I'm glad that you guys fucking crushed it. Yeah, and it, uh, I, I don't know. Uh, it's hard to imagine you know why we sold that twice uh, simon nietzsche the the father of gulungen mm. uh, the father the father, the father. Of, of gulungen yeah you know the main guest yeah uh, he's a great guy yeah a really humble cool funny guy and uh, he's he's kind of well known but i do like to think that it's uh, the concept of gulungen which is like you know kind of reminds you of a tv show uh, at the same time, Simon H is a well-known guy. Yeah. So I like to think that it's 50-50, but it could be, you know, 90% Simon H. I don't, I don't probably think so, well, man, but... because I think concepts are so so powerful these days. Yeah, you Concepts I mean? are everything. Yeah. I think they are. It is, because here in Oslo, like, yeah, everyone does stand-up nights. Yeah. Know, stand-up comedy nights. And uh, I talked to um, uh, Martin Marke at mm. Nyo, mm. and he, he said that uh, if you want to have a show at Nyo, you have to have a concept. Yeah. If you want to watch stand up, you can go anywhere. Yeah. So you have to have a concept. Yeah. And yeah, that's but... why we came up with Gulungen. Yeah, and that's what we're basically doing with everything we are uh, doing. <laughs> but, yeah. but, but you know, we we have uh, Park Salongen mm. uh, and we have uh, Smelteverke. Mm. Uh, like Flypeforce there. Um and we do now we do Salt, two shows at Salt, and every one of them we're trying to do kind of a concept uh, around. Yeah. So it's just not a regular stand-up night because then we're competing with so many other uh, so we're thinking uh, we try to think big yeah when we do our concepts and not just you know uh do regular stand-up night because then we're competing with ourselves again and all the other i I, th- I think that's a really smart strategy and you guys also do kunst intelligence yeah, yeah. Kunst to humor. Kunst to humor. Yeah, yeah. Kunst yeah, to yeah. Humor. It's an it's an improv show. Yeah, that's an improv show. Yeah, it is. I, I really like the graphic design work that you guys Thanks, do. Thanks, dude. Yeah, and I know that's all you. Yeah. And I love that bird. You have the <laughs> Kunst to humor bird, and it looks like a robot. Yeah, that that's the first. Uh, oh, that's that the first was the first poster. Uh, poster. Yeah, we okay. made another one now, but yeah. the the first one that was actually AI who made. No, yeah, the AI yeah. made it. Yeah. Oh, that's who would have thought? Who would have thought? thought? Not me. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shit. Okay. That that was uh, real cool. But um, now we're doing a uh, to humor once a month at Salt. Yeah. Uh, from yeah from fall. Mm. Um, 
And I do think that could be a really big and you know great show yeah. going on uh, forward because it's uh, the 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 art is cool and you know the idea. I haven't seen the idea before. Mm -mm, you know, no. uh, it's it's uh, improv based on. Uh, on Pro is it prompts from AI? Yeah. Yeah. So instead of yeah. get, you get the suggestions from AI, you're like, give me a three locations. Yeah. So wow. we get like uh, funny That's names from, we tell the AI, okay, the concept is um, uh, we, we, we have this one guy, this myth, mythologic, mythological creature yeah, crypto that we call Jack. Crypto Jack. <laughs> nice. And that's basically like a tech savvy buddy of ours. Yeah. Uh, and he puts on like a golden mask. I bought like a, a, this really cheap mask at Sister Nagida and I just spray painted it gold. Mm. And then uh, we, we make him wear it and it gets really sweaty <laughs> underneath, but we, we're like, wear it. Uh, and then he puts on a black hoodie and he, you know, he ties the, the hoodie. Uh, together and it, and it looks really really you know mis mysterious and cool mm. and then he's really tech savvy so, so what he does he uses chat gpt but he prompts it so it looks really like hacker ish yeah, oh like nice matrix then, yeah yeah and yeah. then we put that on the big screen yeah so it looks like uh he's hacking the mainframe as we go nice <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's very conceptual it is it very, is and it comes yeah. down and we we use uh, so so like 95 percent of the show is improv but yeah. we have some planned stuff too like uh for our first show at new uh we we started the show uh, you know having fun uh, me and matthias were doing a scene together and then we had planned that crypto jack was going to interrupt the scene mm. so he just comes from the back of the room and he walks quietly everyone's like what the fuck is going on this guy in the golden mask and a black hoodie is ruining this improv show and then he goes up on stage and he just stands there uh all quiet he doesn't say anything and then we play like uh this uh, this audio uh, file that we had uh yeah. lined up and it goes like i'm crypto jack half part human half binary code and like this <laughs> this uh this graphic on the on the screen behind starts playing and it makes all these techy noises and it's it's it, it's much it's a lot cooler when you see it than when i'm explaining it right now no, but, it's, no but it, exactly it, it, as cool it, it, yeah you <laughs> oh, know, okay. you know, but it's, it sounds like what you're creating is an experience in the audience it is yeah like is, so they, they go there and they're like oh well i'm entering into this world yeah that you exactly. have created yeah and this is this concept and it's heavy on the art and it's heavy on the yeah. characters yeah, yeah and this is what we're going to experience tonight yeah, exactly is. we want people to you know go in there and experience something that's uh you know especially made this uh this night and uh and especially made a show we want it's, we talk a lot yeah. a lot about shows you know just mm. not just uh comedy you know stand up or um you know, we want people to have an experience as a whole yeah and go uh out of there and feel like they've been in a bubble yeah uh the, it's the same with the, the with the gullungen yeah uh which we try to you know as i said uh look like a kind of a talk show kind of gimmicky and if you when you see the poster it kind of looks like it's uh it's kind of you know uh, it looks get on the used mm. you know mm. and that's why we want people to think that it is but it's uh we're we're not many people in Vrevd, <laughs> no. but we just try to make it as big and cool as possible mm. and uh, and that's you know i think that's how uh, we have to do it moving forward is just okay so uh, what's the what's the what's the vision here like what's the plan with verbal like you're putting on all of these shows you're building yeah. more and more experiences you're developing like really strong concepts like yeah. where does this lead but maybe we can talk about like what Vrevel is oh let's go for uh, it uh, because uh, me and matthias we we met uh, in volda because we, we were both <laughs> studying journalism in volda this mm. little town in western part of norway uh and uh we both liked comedy we were both like joking around at parties yeah. and i always thought like matthias is a really funny guy he was like the funniest in our class he was the funniest guy i've ever <laughs> met I I, I was always thinking that Tormund was the funniest guy I ever met. <laughs> wow! <it> just, <laughs> no, yeah. We're, we're, yeah, we're just two uh, guys who really, you know, clicked and yeah, and you good know, good chemistry. We, yeah, good, really good we chemistry. We hit yeah. it off yeah. immediately. It was really funny. Yeah. And then this one time, because there are a lot of like festivals in Volda. Yeah. Uh, this this one is called X2, and it's an extreme sports festival. It's the second biggest in uh, Norway after Extreme Sport in yeah. Vos. And uh, this guy running the whole festival, he's like my uh, Fiermenni. What's that in English? Like fourth cousin. For his, that, <laughs> this is, is, is that. Yeah, if he's, yeah, if he was a chick, you could legally fuck her. 
Great to know. <laughs> or if it was a man, he could legally fuck you him. You could legally fuck him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, wow. I never thought. <laughs> I, gosh I, darn I it. I should have fucked my fourth cousin. <laughs> it's enough steps removed, yeah. but you're still related, but yeah. probably it's the kids legal. will be fine. It's technical legal. <laughs> yeah. No, but uh, he's my fourth cousin. So he was like, uh, Twinwell, I know you study journalism and uh, you're a funny guy. I've seen you uh, in front of the camera before. Do you want to make some uh, promo videos for uh, X2? I was like, yeah, totally. But I knew I needed help. So I immediately asked uh, Matthias, hey, do you, do you want to do something? Uh, and we were like, yeah, of course, let's mm. do it. And then we were like, oh shit, we have to have a page. We have to have like a name. Uh, and then we just came up with Vrövl. Yeah. That was like our first name. Yeah. And, wasn't we, it? and we, <laughs> we have been so proud about, you know, the, the <laughs> name Vrövl. Yeah. We just think it's so fucking cool. You know, mm. Vrövl, it, it kind of, it's everything that we do in one word. You know, mm. just means like blabber, you know? Yeah. Uh, so Nonsense. Nonsense. And that's kind of what we do. Yeah. It's a lot of nonsense, but it's also like the word, it's fun. Yeah. It's a fun word. And yeah. that's, uh, yeah. So Vrövl was it just popped into our, he our heads and we were like, yeah, that's. Yeah. And then learning. Matthias made a logo because he's a graphic designer. Yeah. The first one was really ugly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What version are we up to now? Cool. Uh, the second one. Oh really? Yeah, that's yeah not we have had. No, that's not too bad. The first one was like this head with a giant mouth yeah. and the teeth they spelled vrövl. Yeah, okay. And and when I say it it sounds kind of cool. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> you know it sounds kind of funny, yeah. but when you look at our logo it's like, "Oh, what the fuck does it say? <laughs> what yeah. is that?" It, yeah. it didn't it didn't work in practice. No, it didn't. But the new logo is pretty cool and I like the bird. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. yeah it's, it's great. Uh, it got like a Disney vibe. Like a Disney vibe and it's um you know, it looks it's very animated and animated and, and it fun. Is. Yeah, yeah, just like really cool. What we want to be, yeah. Yeah. Did you design the font? Mm, no, I no. think that's an Adobe font. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Gambado. Gambado. Yeah. Sans. That's, that's the one. Yeah. Nice. I'll exactly. check it out later. <laughs> Maybe I'll put the title of the show in that font. <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> you should do that <laughs> for the thumbnail. Okay. Cool. So you you started the company. Now you have all of these concepts. Yeah. Like what's the like what's the vision of you like Vervo? Like where do you like? Because when you talk to me about like oh we're creating these experiences for people, yeah. like in my head I automatically go to, okay this could be like uh, bigger shows. It could be like uh, maybe fucking tv shows it could be film it could be like it could be whatever you kind of think you want to fucking do with it yeah really so um, yeah yeah that's probably what it what it is and we want we want it to be uh greater and bigger than it is right now of course uh but we do have like a three to five year plan which is we want to move in somewhere mm. and have vrövl sen yep. uh someday and we want to um uh our you know a big goal for us is that Tormund and I can just live off Vrövl. Right now, we don't make shit money. <laughs> we don't no. make, you know, just selling tickets. That's not a lot of money in it when we're when we sell like I don't know between thirty and fifty tickets each time. Yeah, it's not a it's not a lot of money. No, um, but we do have this plan that we can. You know, we want to expand. And right now, I think we're just trying to. You know, we're like a huge river that's running out into uh, a lot of small rivers <laughs> mm. uh, and just testing everything just yep. trying different things yeah, yeah so we want to we want to make more you know videos we want to we we've uh, bought a lot of podcast equipment yep so we want to go in there and just you know be a lab for uh, our uh, people we're like i don't know how many are we like 16, 16. people now yeah yeah mm. actually we're, we're a lot of people but yeah, because who do those people include? Are they comedians? Are they improv yeah. artists? Yeah, Are like they... um, a lot of comedians, but also a lot of uh, people with, um, you know, uh, experience from um, production mm -hmm. and stuff like that. We have like two, and it's all friends, self-friend base. So we, we don't get paid. They don't get paid. They just, they asked us to join. Like we want to So contribute. it's like a creative community. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's it's like cool. a humor yeah. collective. Yeah, yeah, nice. Almost like, that's what, that's what I, I answer when people ask like, what is Vrövl? Mm. Now like, it's a humor collective. We just do whatever's fun. Yeah. yeah. And we try, try to do it uh, as fun as possible uh, yeah. while having as much fun as possible mm. and putting on great fucking child. Yeah, I like the idea of a humor collective. Yeah. I think it's really important. And I think the structure of it based around like community and like if you find some way to, I don't know, monetize certain projects that could help 
everybody continue to do it more and more over yeah. time, I feel like that's a really good goal. Yeah, I think so. And I think it works right now because none of us, we don't, you know, we don't, there's no salary in this no. for us. And I think that's why it works right now. But as soon as we expand and hopefully make more money, that's going to be harder and we have to, you know, make even more money to hire the people mm. because, you know, creative, uh, you know, when you, as soon as someone begins to take the money out of the company, people are going to start to think that it you know, begins to be unfair and so on. So we just have to have this as a, you know, yeah. passion project. Yeah. Uh, we get our as salary. As long as we can. We yeah. get our salary in laughter. That's it. <laughs> and, and togetherness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Laughter and togetherness. You get paid in yeah. happiness. Yeah, totally. And it sounds really Christian right now. Yeah, but, let's but, sing Kumbaya Law. Yeah, <laughs> and holding hands, eating buns, and but drinking I, you, soft. You, you have you have like a really good vision. And I, I see like the growth that you guys have made in the last 12 months. Yeah. Like, I, I see it from like Pukalan to the shows at Nya to the sold out shows at Salt. And now what you've told me there, like you, you have the momentum and it feels like you have like the right community spirit. Like you're inclusive. It's not just you guys. You want to bring people in. And then uh, I guess the kind of trick is just like, how do you sustain it over time? Like exactly. how do you, you know, how can you like, how can you live off it? And how can it be like maybe some kind of project base profit reward thing? That's where it kind of gets really complicated. Really complicated. Really complex. And I'm like, I've done a lot of like work in like film and TV and stuff like that in the past. And that's all project based. So it's like, okay, we've got this project. We finance this thing and we've got this budget. And this is where we can spend it for this duration of the project. But once you start getting, oh, full-time salaries and all that kind of stuff, it becomes such a fucking nightmare. Yeah, because when you said the word budget, I was like, huh, yeah. <laughs> I, I can care less about budgets, but I know I should because it's an, a really important part of the production and you know project management. But you, w whenever money comes up, I'm like, I don't want to think about that. I want to think about funny things. Yeah, uh, and I think, I think that's kind of what you should yeah. think about too. Because yeah. once you start dividing your mind and you start becoming practical, logical, yeah. you switch off or you dedicate resources away from creativity and humor. Yeah, but at the same yeah. time, since we're like in charge of this uh, this vessel mm. that is Vrevl, uh, we have to think about those things and it, it really forces us to be practical and I don't like that. No. Uh, I just want to make uh, funny things, but I, I know I have to you know, put myself into the, like the money. And, and another aspect. way of looking at that is, is that you have a certain parameters to be creative within. Oh. And yeah. that's what a budget does. It's, okay, these are your parameters and you can do whatever you can do within those parameters. So. Yeah, and right now we're really lucky in that, uh, in that we don't make a lot of money. So mm. that's kind of being lucky right now because uh, we use like, I don't know, maybe depending on how big sh the, the show we, uh, is gonna get, we mm. want it to get. Uh, we use maybe thousand kroner in ads, you know, and I make all the art and the graphic design and so on. So that's not something we have to, you know, ask other people or pay other people to do. And uh, Turmod, he's uh, booking and uh, we work together to make this all work. Mm. And we have a lot of real good people around us who help us. Um, so it's not a lot of money in uh, into the project, uh, but it's not a lot of money out of the project either but we still we're you know we're we're uh, us yep uh, yeah, so cool. nice so congrats yeah that's so, good thank you that's yeah, really yeah. good <laughs> but it comes with responsibilities it like does, all the Ryan Scarp and the accounting yeah. and you're you yeah. have to you know the state is watching yeah, yeah. exactly so yeah. we have Fik and we have Fulu um, and whatever we have this business card we can use when we want to you know, oh, pay nice. the pay some pizza, yeah, for the people. Oh, but it's smart. Yeah, exactly. Pizza for yeah, the people. Yeah, yeah, pizza yeah. for the people. Yeah. So, uh, right now it's a, in a really good state. That's uh, good. Yeah. But we're, we're only been doing for... this for twelve months. Yeah, like now in August, mm. that will be our one year anniversary. Mm. Uh, putting up shows under Vrevl. Yeah, mm. and in one year we've we've done a lot, and we've uh, we've grown from two people, me and Matthias, to yeah. like uh, sixteen. And we we have an improv group now. Yeah, we're gonna do a review next year. Yeah, uh, Salt asked us to put up uh, a festival, 
a two-day festival. Mm-hmm. So we're doing that as well. Oh, what kind of festival? A humor festival, Vrevel Festival. Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh wow. We have, yeah. That's we great. Have like, yeah, that's congratulations. Cool. Thank you. We yeah. have long-term projects now, so it's not just from show to show. We have like things to think about in far future, like next year. When's yeah. the festival? Next summer, in about one year exactly. Ah, oh, so you have a lot of time to plan it. So they're gonna have yeah. the Salt Humor Festival, and then they're gonna have the Vrevel. Humor Festival I as think well. That's yeah. The plan, yeah, but we're gonna, wow. you know, it kind of uh, resembles each other. Yeah. So we have to be smart about how we, uh, you know, talk about it and yep. how it looks and how what what we do there because of course we want Gullong in there and we want a lot of really fun people and you know, improv groups and so on. Uh, but it, but we have to do it in a smart smart way. Also, it re- looks really good to have Vrev Festival. You know, mm. it's. It's just super fun, and it's like this great huge carrot hanging in front of us. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah these two dumb donkeys running after the. Uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> I regret that, dude. No, wow. Okay, yeah. if you have your own festival, then you have your own opportunity for getting sponsors. Exactly. Yeah, I feel yeah. like that's a good opportunity to like see whether you can get some. Axe body spray. Yeah, that's <laughs> like because you you have a look at all these festivals yeah. and it's just sponsored up the ass. Yeah, you know what I mean. Is. Like Palmas's, I think I can't imagine how much money they generate, like with sponsorship and stuff like that. It I must know. be like millions and millions and millions and millions and millions. Hundred percent. Yeah, spot bank and come at us. You know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. They exactly. love to give out money and we love to. They take go. them. <laughs> but I feel like you have like such a positive humor spreading like joy kind of message that like any, you know, like one of the companies that I thought about that make the best ads is like Finn.no. Yeah. Like Finn.no, all the uh, commercials, it, a lot of them are like they're humor based. Mm. They, they're so, they're so humor. And even like BI, like Business Institute, yeah. like they make so many funny ads. I agree. So if you find a big company like that that wants to get behind the idea of humor and you're selling tickets to thousands and thousands and thousands of people so like the exposure to their brand in that demographic it's pretty fucking valuable man yeah it is no no doubt about it and even though we don't you know maybe we won't have a lot of money in the end Mm. because we want we just don't want to you know go bankrupt but um as soon as soon as people see our name on you know post uh posters and and uh really funny people with huge amount of people who follow them on Instagram, you know, just regram and so on. It's branding mm. right now from, you know, our first year and maybe the next five years is all about branding. Mm. You know, how many, much money we, weigh, we make, <laughs> it, it doesn't matter No, right mm. now. It's as soon as we, you know, start to make huge amounts of money, it's different. But right now it's just so fun and it should be like that for as long as possible until yeah. you know we get burnt out yeah, mm. yeah. more yeah. money more problems yeah but you're Mahatma right it's, it's all about the branding you mm. know how much money uber made last year no have a guess 300 million dollars good guess what do you think when you when you ask like that i guess it's like three dollars <laughs> minus three billion really i think so yeah i think they lost three billion Three billion dollars they lost. Even with Uber Eats. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> Listen, I'm probably way off on the number. Maybe yeah. it's like three hundred million or eight hundred million, but it's a fuck ton of money. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. Uber lose money every single year. They've never really? made money. Whoa. Why? Isn't that crazy? Because no. they're just working on branding and their business model is to wait until you have automated cars. And then all that cash goes to them. Then of they of course exactly. So then yeah. they develop a fleet of self driving Ubers. And then their brand is already there yeah. and the money comes in and now they just cut out the, the driver and the human <laughs> and the middleman and they just get all the cash. That's our plan. We're just going to, you know, cut out. get rid of <laughs> all the funny people in the yeah. and we'll have robots being like, yeah. I can't believe you done that. <laughs> <laughs> I am a robot. <laughs> yeah, that's our plan. Yeah, made, exactly. Yeah. That's a good plan. That's the Uber model. But it, yeah. it goes to show <laughs> like model. how important like branding is and just fucking doing the thing that people like and getting the reputation like that is yeah. so valuable. It is. It, it is. is. And uh, I think we'll, uh, I think we'll make it. And uh, we're just, we're, right now we're just two guys trying to have as much fun as possible while, you know, making, and that's really important for us, actually. Uh, you know, Vrevl Impro, mm. for example, it, we're like nine, ten people now. Nine. Yeah. yeah. And what's really fun there, we can, you know, give this really great people and funny people a stage to be funny at. 
yeah. and make great uh, improv. And we get to do improv. So I just I hope we can, you know, continue to do that as long as possible until mm. we get our own place and can start to pay people. So you want to get like a physical venue? Yeah. Yeah, a physical oh, venue, wow. maybe a studio like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And make content, make podcasts. Uh, you know, we have this equipment. Yeah. I, I, I work, I work uh, in podcast production for a living. Mm. Uh, so we got this. Uh, yeah. That's what we want to do, and yeah. and shout out to everyone at Vrev because it's uh, we're talking about you know me and Matthias want to make uh, great stuff, but we have all these really talented and kind and really motivated people on our team mm. that they're doing a lot of great work. So it's not me and Matthias doing everything, no, because uh, we we delegate a lot of the work to other people. Like we have uh, Henriette Holtman, stand-up comedian here in uh, Oslo. Uh, shout out yeah shout out shout uh, out holding the ropes at um, Smelteverke mm. we have Felix and Robert shout out to those people yeah at, they, they uh, are they doing Park Salongen yeah, 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 exactly. yeah, yeah nice. and we have Brevel Impro it's oh my wow, there's so many uh, Hilda uh, Tiril you yeah, know who you yeah. are yeah, yeah. you know, you know who, who you are, who you are. Yeah, exactly. yeah, it's, it's good though that you can get you know, the community aspect behind it and get other people to be a part of the team. Yeah. yeah. Because that, like, if you don't have those people, you're just going to get burned out. So yeah. you really do need to delegate resources and, you know, fucking sh share the share the vision a little bit. Yeah. yeah. We want exactly. to be like the Manson family, just less killing and more ha ha. Yeah. yeah but yeah, a yeah. bit yeah. killing. A bit, a of bit killing. we're going to kill it on stage. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> have you been performing much lately? No, I haven't. I've, I've been done uh, a lot, uh, a bit more. You know, we had Gullungen. Yeah, we did. Yeah, mm. at Humor Festival. But I, have, I haven't done a lot of stand-up lately. Uh, but it's been more improv and, you know, I've done some... Um, uh, what heter uh, Konferenser. Yeah. Yeah. MC. I, MC. MC. Yeah, I think that's, that's what really called. funny. Mm. I really like uh, being an MC. It's fun, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's, it's a skill. Like it, like it you is. You gotta really figure that out. Yeah, but yeah. I really believe that improv has made me a much better MC. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. It's important. Yeah, it really is. Man, I spoke to uh, Joachim Skaga about adding a MC award to the RDK yeah. uh, awards night. That's a good idea. I That's think so, idea. because it like, really is. a good MC is everything. Yeah. yeah. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And I've, I've emceed where it's gone really well and yeah. I've emceed where it's gone really badly. And like the difference is huge for it the is. show. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. like that skill, I think should be like really like highlighted and yeah. go, okay, best new club comedian, solo show. Yeah, yeah. Who's the best MC? Exactly. Yeah, because yeah. they're the natural funny people. Mm. They go up there and just be funny. They talk to people and they make jokes up on the spot. Yeah. And that's really hard to it do. Is. It's a it completely is. different skill too. Yeah. Like if you just go up and you go, this is the set that I've done a hundred times. Yeah. That's not addressing the really drunk lady. That's not talking <laughs> right, about exactly. like yeah. w w uh, where the toilet is or whatever. Speaking about really drunk la uh, lady. <laughs> I was I was in Badigin yeah, was yes. it, for like two weeks ago doing Mörke Kjellern at Rick's. Oh. Uh, and... There was this one drunk ass lady, probably in her third, like thirty years old or something, sitting there with her friend at the first row. And from the start of the show, Jan Tore Kristoffersen was uh, was doing MC. Mm. He went on, and from the moment he began talking into the microphone, this lady was like, she was putting her hand up, like she was <laughs> in a cool. fucking classroom. Yeah. She's like. <laughs> And, and and she was like drunk of her mind and it was horrible. She did it to everyone. She heckled. Mm. Uh, it was her like second time going to a comedy show. And she was like, I'm going to participate. No, <laughs> just shut the fuck yeah, up. Yeah, shut the yeah. fuck up. Yeah, okay. So she was super wasted. She's, and then she, she just thought like, this is a group participation. Yeah. Let me try. <laughs> yeah. Make it about me. Yeah, 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 yeah. And well, it was how did really... you guys deal with it? Uh, I heard I heard uh, Jan Tour uh, talking to her like a little bit. I was like really focused because I had some new material I wanted to some I wanted to dark do. I was material. On... Some dark material. Summoning the Summoning dark the dark lords. You think darkness is your ally? <laughs> I was born in it. <laughs> no, but uh, <laughs> anyway, I was doing some new materials. I was like really focused uh, and a little bit like uh, stressed out, you know, doing these jokes because it was really like hit or miss. Uh, 
Yeah. Because uh, uh, I don't have much dark material. Uh, so I wrote <laughs> You're such some. a nice guy. I, I, so I'm way too positive. nice to do dark material. I don't want to punch down. I'm going to punch up. Uh, but I, I've written some uh, 22nd of July jokes. Oh, Yep. Nice. That's the darkest. That's the, the darkest. That's the, okay, so just for anybody that doesn't know, the concept of the show is... Yeah, it's called Mörke Yeah. And it means uh, here you can tell dark jokes here, dark material, and uh, none of us are going to be offended because yeah. it's uh, It's a safe it's space implied. for... F- the darkest humor the darkest the darkest of the dark so there were everything you know murder jokes rape jokes incest jokes everything Uh, and I brought some you know a little bit of tragedy to the show Uh, everything landed (laughs) but when I went on she were putting her hands up she were uh, putting her hand up wanting to speak to me Mm. and I was like what what are you doing what do you want and then she was like I just finished talking about uh, Ute yeah (laughs) (laughs) I'm sorry and then she was like uh were you the handsome guy at Utoya playing soccer? I know it made no sense. It Were made you the no handsome sense. guy at Utoya playing guy. soccer. Yeah, it was really weird. It was really weird. Well, you like, do play soccer and, and you're handsome. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was it. really weird. Yeah. And I was like, uh, why? <laughs> what? What? Was this during your set or after? This was du- during my set. Oh, so she just interrupted. She just interrupted, and then I yeah. said, uh, "What's your name?" And she said something stupid. Uh, uh, she told her me her name, but it was stupid. Uh, and then I said, uh, "And this is your friend?" And she was like, "Yeah." And I was like, "You guys look like the cast of Sex in the City if you did GHB." Yeah, yeah. and it worked. Uh, and then she shut up the yeah. rest of my set. But yeah. the next man went on. And she put her hand up again. Dude, I have a theory about hecklers. Okay. And it's not the same. You can't apply this to every heckler. Mm. But there is a particular type of heckler that wants to be destroyed. Yeah. Like, they almost like... You know how people pay to go to a dominatrix to kind of, like, get that experience? <laughs> no, yeah. I, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but there is... I've, I've, I've noticed this several times that there is somebody that keeps making it about them until you go... Okay, you want all the attention. Let's give you all the attention. And the best way to do that is to just like fucking roast you for 30 seconds or something like that. And then they go, oh, it became about me. (laughs) Yeah. Everybody. Did you see that? Yeah. That's what you have to do. And then then they sit there like. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. Man, we we did this show at Salt, this English speaking show two weeks ago. And there was a woman in the audience that had. I think she had like, I'm not sure, like maybe Tourette's or so- something. And she kept like shouting out. How Dude, she you? listens to the podcast, by the way. <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, so hey, shout out. Sh- sh- you. Shout out to you, yeah. lady. And then like, it was like, uh, it was like, uh, I, I felt like uh, people were kind of like, oh, we don't know what to say because should we give her the attention? We should just make it more. And they kind of like addressed it a little bit. And then when I, I went on stage like second last and I was like, I've been listening to this chick all night and like everybody knows this chick is there and every like she, she must have spoken like multiple times during every comedian set and nobody really kind of like roasted her a little bit no. and I go you know what she can take it I'm gonna <laughs> roast her a little bit and then I had this like joke about like weed and she goes I smoke weed <laughs> And I go, yeah, I bet it's really good for your symptoms. <laughs> <laughs> and That's then great. it was like, it was just the perfect thing. And it's just like, ha ha, yes, you, yeah. you got me. And then there was a few more interactions like that where we just acknowledged, yeah. here's the attention, here's a roast. All right, let's go. Let's move yeah, on yeah, with the show. Exactly. At, 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 uh, at some point, the rest of the uh, audience just wants her to be roasted too. Yes. Wants her to shut up and, you know, just just fucking burn her dude exactly yeah, to a crisp and then yeah. we're done with it yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. i had the same experience up at uh daniel you know on the loft <laughs> yeah uh, miss for nurse's body mm. there was this really drunk guy he, he was you know uh at the you know at the front and he just didn't shut up just the same thing you know mm. and then and, and then i roasted him and he was like <laughs> okay yeah finally you know he was so happy about it exactly. too and everyone's like that's the funniest shit i've heard tonight yeah because the crowd want it yeah he wants it Exactly. The crowd fucking wants you to do yeah. it. And you're like, should I go weapons free? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Click, clack. <laughs> let's go, bitch. Exactly. Headshot. Headshot. Yeah. It's a weird phenomenon. It it's is. It's a weird phenomenon. But yeah. you have to deal with it sometime in your stand-up career. Oh, yeah. You have to yeah. be able to deal with it sometime. Mm. I've been heckled like three times total in total. I've done, I've done stand-up like for 
uh, about two years now, mm. three times in total. So it's yeah. not a lot. I think no. audience in Norway are pretty polite, yeah. you know, usually. But sometimes you have like a rotten egg in the bag. Yeah. And uh, I remember this one guy at Lincoln, mm. who's sitting <laughs> like, because Lincoln. Lincoln is like the best worst stage you have here in Oslo. Every comedian yeah. knows it. Everyone's been there doing bombing, you know, in front of three people. Yeah. You know? yeah. Uh, and then um, there, there's this one guy who's sitting like on top of the, you know, the rail in oh, front at, of the, the stage. Front? He was yeah. sitting on that thing? On that thing. Really? He was sitting there wow. just looking like, that's a bit close. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was really close. It was all up in my business. Yeah. Uh, and I just I just went at him because he was heckling everyone from the first, you know, you get what you pay for yep. uh, in free stand-up. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So he was sitting there just heckling everyone and I just went at him. I've never been, because I was really, I was I was a bit furious. I was like really mad and I knew he was going to heckle me. Mm. So from the first time I just went at him, like all guns blazing, <laughs> double barrel, shotgun, boom, yeah. boom, boom. And how'd it go? It went really well. <laughs> yeah. Right, and but it didn't shut up. Nah. <laughs> it just went on. It just went on talking. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I've I've had to deal with it a couple of times. Not many. What's your worst worst experience with a, oh, with a heckler? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I actually haven't had a lot of really bad experiences with a heckler. The to best be honest. experience then? Dude, maybe the best experience was I did uh, a show at Nia, uh, yeah. and there was this like wasted chick in the audience, <laughs> and she kept on like shouting at things out, but she gave me so much gold. Okay. Like it was one of those things. It was like I had a whole 15 minute set planned and then I dedicated like seven minutes to her yeah. throughout the whole night. You know, like if you just, she would just always jump in with things. Like, does, does anybody do? I have. <laughs> it, it, it was like a really good experience that ended up making the show better. Yeah. And then, like, I didn't like really roast her too hard or anything like that. But like, she just had all these like ridiculous things to say. Like, she just said things that were just like really, she was really funny. And then she came up on stage and gave me a hug and all this kind of shit. So, it was a really good experience. Yeah. Yeah. I actually have that whole set. I filmed it. I might I might just wow. release the whole set. Yeah, you should. I think That's so. Yeah. I have the film from uh, Bidegan from two weeks ago. So you can hear Ooh. her and you can probably hear her, you know, putting her hand up and stuff. Yeah, but you she was release it on Instagram. She was starved for attention because after the show, we're all sitting, taking a beer upstairs. Yeah. And she came over and she tried to, you know, hit on each one of us yeah. <laughs> from the right and then just working her way around the yeah, table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, but I mean, sometimes the heckler is funnier than you two. Have you ever experienced that? Yeah. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's that, yeah. That's a bummer. Yeah, that's a bummer. Yeah. But but sometimes they just have you know the comments are just too funny. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I had that experience at um, at Pukal yeah, at one of our shows, and that's <laughs> it was actually one of our friends who was in the in in the audience. Who? Uh, Katrina. Nah, I, yeah, yeah, Katrina, yeah, yeah. what are you doing? Well, <laughs> you know, we talked about it uh, before we started filming, but I have scoliosis. Mm. And uh, a part of my bit, I talk about having scoliosis. And then I start, you know, I was uh, an MC that night and I started talking to the audience and it was a lot of fun. It was uh, a great, great show. And uh, one of them is, you know, they're an architect. So <laughs> I just asked them, you know, what's your favorite building? And uh, and she's like, well, I don't know. <laughs> and then I asked, well, okay, baby, what do you think? Uh, what what kind of building am I? And she's like, Munkmuse. <laughs> <laughs> nice, like the ugliest yeah, building yeah, in the yeah. whole fucking city. The ugliest, city. most crooked building. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. Oh, that's right. It's crooked yeah, too. It's crooked. Yeah. Oh, that's a good reference. Yeah, that, that's a really good reference. And <laughs> it it was so funny. I just had you know had to put on the next co uh, comedian. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> on that note. On that note. But I'm not I, funny anymore. <laughs> but I, I always think when things like that happen, you go, oh. I'm going to use that. Yeah, exactly. When they yeah. say something that is so good and it hits, you're <laughs> yeah. like, wow, thank you. That's a gift. Yeah. You know, you could always like use that if you needed to. 100%. Yeah, yeah that's so good. That was really funny. So, you know, I feel I felt kind of, um, you know, I was I was burnt to a crisp uh, by her, but, but it was funny. It was worth it, you know? And yeah, yeah. You well, if you give it, it, you got to take it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It's stand up too. So, you <laughs> you know, you have to play the game. You yeah, gotta yeah. play the game. Yeah, yeah. I loved it. No, but I, I love man. Like one of the things that I love about doing stand up comedy is like the ability for people just to roast each other and talk shit. And you know what I mean? Like I would say, like one of the biggest disappointments that I have in myself as a comedian was I did a roast at uh, a humor festival. Yeah, and I spent so much time working through the order of the people that by the time I got to Marius Torkilsen. I kind of didn't have enough material to roast him with. And I spent a lot of time roasting Armored and Galta and all these other people. But by the time I got to Marius, I just I just ran out of time. And I was like trying to make stuff up on the spot. 
And I just didn't do him justice by like giving him the proper roast he deserves. Yeah. And that's such a weird thing to say is that like, I didn't honor you by insulting you, <laughs> yeah, but that's how I felt, you know? So like, I really think that like, if I spent the time writing a, let's say I did a five minute roast of you. That's like yeah. the best compliment you can get. Thank you, Inia. <laughs> That's really kind of you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be 10 minutes. Just at, ten, at least 20. At least 20. Yeah. <laughs> just out of curiosity, what, what, will you, what will you roast me on? You know what? The, the, you know what? I, I've got a really good a answer for that. Okay. I have a really good answer for that. <laughs> yeah. Because I, what I noticed at the roast was that everybody went for everybody else's weaknesses. Yeah. Right, but what you should go for is somebody's strengths. Their mother, yeah, strength. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so it's super easy, obvious, just to you know roast you on being like white and pale and an incel and stuff like that. But if you found, I'm not white and pale. <laughs> <laughs> but if you found like what are your strengths, like what's he really good at, and then you attack them, yeah, that's, that's like a whole nother dimension. Yeah, that's of personal. Roasting. That's fuck. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, but then it like because everybody did the same jokes. Everybody did like, uh, you know, like Ahmed uh, is black, but white on the inside. Yeah. You know, Galt is white. The bald guy's bald. Yeah. But if you kind of find like a bit, bit, like if you find a little something on top of the obvious, yeah. then I think it's better. You, you know, I, I'm turning 30 in uh, the end of August. 30 yes. 30. And uh, <laughs> uh, for my 30th birthday, I wanted to make it something special. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to have a, a roast of me on yeah. my 30th birthday. So Turmud is one of the guys who's going to roast me. Nice. Uh, and it's going to be like four to five other people who know me really well. They're mm. not comedians. They're just friends who know me and are going to roast me. So I'm, <laughs> I'm kind of nervous because I know there's a lot of things about me that I can think of that's going to be roasted, mm. you know. But <laughs> <laughs> the things I'm scared of are the things that I haven't thought of. Yeah, exactly. And everyone's laughing. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So they're, they're, they're roasting me oh, and I'm like, so really? Really? And everyone's, you know, exploding of laughter. It's going to be yeah. so much fun. Because you, you, you've asked all your friends or several of your friends to do a roast. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but how many of them are comedians? Like, it's you. <laughs> it's you, man. Yeah. It's going to be great. Because yeah. I know uh, two of Matthias's ex Matthias? Matthias <laughs> from the Bible, yes. from Jericho. Right. I know Matthias three sixteen. Yes. <laughs> know thy exes. I know two of his exes, and I have his mother's uh, cell phone number, and uh, I know his brother. I have a lot of research to do, and I've already done some, and it's yeah. really funny. I'm looking forward to it, yeah, and I love you. It's gonna hurt. It's gonna hurt. I know it's yeah. gonna hurt. Yeah, from that's good though. Lighting. That's what you want. Yeah, I want to be. You want to feel it. Exactly. I want to be thirty and one day and humble. Yeah. You know, I want to w wake up the next day and feel like shit. Yeah, yeah unlike humble. any other day. <laughs> unlike any other day. <laughs> wake up at, le at 11.30 and be like, hey, I'm a fucking yeah. great person. With, with peaks on your bear belly. <laughs> you know, pepperoni slice in your belly button. Yeah, mm. not picking it up, eating it. Eating, like, eating it. That's no. my breakfast. <laughs> there we go. Breakfast of champions. Ah, yeah. yeah. uh, that sounds fun. Yeah. Fuck, I got pretty humbled last night. How? Oh, really? my God. My set totally ate shit. Really? Oh, yeah, Where? yeah, yeah. At Salt. Okay. It was yeah. English comedy. English comedy. Yeah. It crashed and burned wow. so fucking hard. Oh, my. So hard. Yeah. And the weird thing was that, like, I did the pretty much the exact set the night before and killed. Oh, of it's course. so yeah. weird. You know, or not. The, the, what happened? How was your energy? Is it Was it, like, the same from the night before? No, it was different. So, yeah. I mean, I'll... I'll I, I can... Okay, so the night before as well was in Langhusa. And we had like 250, 300 people. Packed. Wow. And yeah. last night it was in Ark Arctic Sena. Yeah. yeah. So it's a much bigger stage. It's the biggest. It's very, very big. And it was much later. I wasn't on stage until like quarter past 11. Okay. So I was headlining and like yeah. it was like a late show. And uh, I didn't like use enough energy there wasn't enough energy in the room like they were pretty tired yeah. and the stage is big and i'm yeah. on crutches now because i had this <laughs> knee injury so yeah. i can't really move around a lot so the i didn't i didn't pull off the jokes and they didn't appear to be like jokes they appeared Oof. to be like just offensive oh so you're oh. a crippled and funny guy on Ace. a huge stage and sexist <gasps> Sexist and sexist. And, do you want to hear the bit? <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Let me let me see if I can remember it. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, if you're a man, you you shouldn't go and watch Barbie. Like it's it's not for you, dude. Like obviously, the only reason a man should watch Barbie is to see whether a head gets ripped off. Uh, spo <laughs> spoiler alert: it doesn't. So it's not very nostalgic. 
you know, if you had little sisters, you understand. Uh, but it's really nostalgic for women. Uh, the movie will transport you back to the golden age of childhood. And if you're lucky, you might even relive the exact moment you developed body dysmorphia. <laughs> yeah, because, yeah okay and then and then it goes on and then it's like uh if you're a man maybe you should watch Oppenheimer. Yeah. it's much more entertaining unless you're japanese then it's just a three hour long cinematic masterpiece about why you have a low sperm count yeah <laughs> and, and, and and then i go uh oh yeah so uh isn't that a flex from america they make first they drop bombs and then they drop a summer blockbuster <laughs> number one film in the world no, wait. Number two, I guess not even a nuclear weapon is more powerful than a superficial cunt's need for attention. <laughs> wow. I know. And yeah. then I, wow. dude, it gets yeah. worse. It gets worse. Yeah. Okay. It gets way worse. It gets way worse. <laughs> and then I go, I can't believe even women want to watch Barbie. Don't you realize she's the reason you have this empty hole inside of you that can only be filled with dicks and likes? And you're blaming the patriarchy? Fuck, Barbie sets unrealistic expectations. Both her tits are exactly the same size, and she lives in the Malibu dream house. <laughs> Bitch, you can't even afford a one-bedroom apartment in Torshoff. <laughs> but the problem is that Barbie's a terrible role model. You should look up to a real woman, like Caitlyn Jenner. <laughs> 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 like Caitlyn Jenner she's strong <laughs> smart and doesn't act like a complete cunt one week every month <laughs> I can see why yeah. you, you're struggling you know yeah yeah, yeah in yeah. front of a young bit drunk PC super audience. woke yeah really yeah. tired audience yeah, yeah. not getting anywhere not no. getting anywhere but the killed the night before yeah exactly. like murdered the night before yeah it your bit sounds like a facebook comment section yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it does it does it's like why would you want to watch barbie <laughs> exactly exactly and i was like i talked to Penilla about it today and she gave me such really good feedback yeah like, she, okay, she was great. doing mc she was right? emceeing yeah. it yeah, yeah cool. and I, she's great she's the best yeah. yeah and that ate like that bit ate shit and she's like Okay, there's a few things you need to understand yeah. about the way you communicate your character. Like you're a white, buff-looking dude, uh, you know, like in his 40s, yeah. who like takes up a lot. And like you're doing so much about this Barbie premise, talking about like women issues. And so like like she spent a lot of energy like unpacking it for me today. And she yeah. was 100% right. Are you yeah, in your because 40s? that. Yeah, yeah, I just, yeah, 44. Oh, you're, yeah, you're in your 50s. Yeah. 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 Yeah, but anyway, so that bit, a shit. Yeah. And then afterwards, yeah. like, they fucking hated me. And there was, like, yeah. this woke crowd that were in the audience. Yeah. And I just saw them <laughs> folding their arms. <laughs> and I go, oh, okay. This isn't, and I was like, it's only going to get worse from here. Yeah. So that's what so, happened, man. Well, what? well, do you ever, I'm uh, sorry, do, do you ever feel like... You ever think about that that you're that you're, that you're a white man doing you know that kind of stand up because it's kind of hard doing that to a young audience, you know you're you're in a position where you have to think about who you are and what you look like you know yeah when you do that kind of stand up yeah you're in you're in danger of you know like Tolmud said uh, sounding like a comment section on Facebook yeah exactly and I didn't give it enough consideration no I didn't give and and it was like it killed the night before like we were in like this comedy competition you know between like five or six people and like that set like i came second i think yeah oh. so it was like and it murdered like yeah. absolutely murdered uh, to a young crowd yeah. but it just last night it just didn't work no. but what do you what do you do when you're you're down there or what do you what do, what are your thoughts when you're down there and and you bomb so hard you know what it was just like, I have to try to make them like me again. Yeah. <laughs> and I, that's what I, I got to like try to win them back. But I'll say this. There were a few people in the audience that fucking loved it. Yeah. That loved it. There was like a table of dudes and like they had like some chicks with them and they loved it. They fucking loved it. Yeah. And I go, okay, out of like these 70 people, like those eight, they're the people. They're the ones. And then I yeah. just kind of played to them. I go, listen, yeah. the people in the front here, like this group of like, they're not into it. Yeah. They're just not 
fans of me or this type of comedy. But those dudes are. Yeah. So should I spend energy trying to fucking win the approval of these people? Or should I go, okay, you're the ones that I'm doing it for. You're that table right there. Exactly. Yeah, that, that's what you have to do too, you know, when you're bombing in. <laughs> just, you know, to protect yourself from not having a terrible experience. Mm. Just look to the people who are actually laughing. Yeah. 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 But it was like a pretty devastating experience you <laughs> yeah. know and, and the, you know, the, the worst part is like i was like i spent so much time like crafting those jokes and i didn't want them to seem like it's sexist at all i'm like trying to really criticize barbie and the whole point is that like i think it's stupid that barbie created so many fucking body image yeah. problems for women and then women are fucking supporting the film well, have you seen the movie? No. Well, you that's should see it because that's the big deal exactly. in the movie. Yeah. The, that's the point of the movie exactly. It's like uh, the movie starts off with, you know, Barbie world and it's and it's just this wonderful place where everything everyone thinks that they, you know, save the world by having uh, lawyer uh, Barbie and mm. Dr. Barbie. And they think that everyone, you know, should have a lot of confidence. You know, the women should have a lot of confidence because of that. But then it showed that, you know, Barbie is not that good anyway. Yeah. But I, I saw it like two days ago and I think it's, you know, half good, half bad. Mm. Um, I think it was a little bit too long. Yeah. But, uh, you know, the it's okay. It's an okay movie. I, you know, you I, should see it. You know, I don't want to watch it, man. I fucking like. You I, should I, watch it if your whole, you have 10 minutes about it. I should. Yeah. I should. But the, the, the reason I don't want to watch it is because like I don't fucking support Barbie. No. Like and I even know the movie addresses that. Yeah. But like I really do know fucking a lot of chicks that like have these weird issues and I'm pretty sure growing up with these fucking dolls is not helping. So it's like I understand that the movie addresses that and I probably should see it. Another reason I don't want to see it as well is cuz I saw a review from the critical drinker and he have you ever seen it? <laughs> no, sounds but it like sounds a, like somebody who yeah. hates the movie. Reliable yeah, he source. hates the movie. Yeah. He hates the movie. And I was like, ah, oh, man, I hate the movie. But <laughs> what he said, and maybe you can like support this or not, is he said that the movie is like really anti male. And that like the yeah. it's like kind of like making men look like fucking idiots. And it's like really anti yeah but but if, if you hate that from a from a movie then maybe you should you know consider something else doing something else in your life because if you if you get that offended by a movie that you know that talks about men in the way that it, yeah they make a laughing stock out of men uh, in a big part of the movie mm. but you know it's funny you have to you know laugh you have to be able to laugh you know yeah. by the uh, of that of there <laughs> yeah yeah uh, so you know, I think if you if you're that soft and you think it's that horrible, you know that they're fucking making fun of men. Uh, uh, Jesus Christ, calm down, dude. It's I, a movie. I haven't yeah, seen yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen it, but I used it's to funny. cut the hair off my sister's Barbies when I was a little kid. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And pull their heads off. You used and... to rip their arms out, make them like a quadruple amputee, and just put them back. Exactly. She's like, "Tudemo, where's my Barbie's arms and legs?" And I was like, "You'll never know. You'll never know. <laughs> yeah. They're gone." They addressed that too, you know. In the movie. Fuck. They thought of everything. <laughs> they thought of everything. Yeah. 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 I'm going to go watch the movie. Yeah. I'll should. watch it. I'll watch it. <laughs> I'll should. watch it. Yeah. So that's that was my experience with like yeah. eating shit and bombing. And yeah. it came from like a few different mistakes that I made. And yeah. But it was just really interesting to see that like how from one night it worked to another night it didn't work. Yeah. And like that process. And there was a few things that I did differently and stuff like that. But like that process was really interesting. But yeah. it's like I, 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 I don't like eating shit but oh. it oh. i had a <laughs> but i had a really good conversation with Penilla about like creating a you know the character and the way that yeah. you are received on stage and how yeah. important that is it is it's really important i used to uh when i was new in the game uh i really look up to hane yeah she's because yeah. she's she has the audience like in the palm of her hand she was there every, last night every fucking time yeah, she killed it she's, yeah of course she did she's brilliant but uh and i i was like how how do you like hook the audience from from like the get-go she was like you know the key uh what i found out uh it was it's like a, you cooperate with the audience it's not uh, us versus them it's mm. like we're gonna have fun together mm. you have to look at them and you have to you know address with your punches, you know, directly to the people. You have to like be, you know, present in the moment. And that like, I was like, whoa, uh, of course. Mm. So that's, that's, I think that's the key. 
you know that's yeah. that helped me a lot yeah there's, there's there's definitely something to that and like last night as well like i was spending a lot of time like trying to remember yeah material and then you're more in your head right and not like in the room which is like the skill that you develop as the mc yeah. you're like you're always in the room like you're yeah, right exactly. there like you're, you're right there with them yeah yeah but honey did great last night man she's such a good comedian yeah, she, she is. every time i see her she's doing great yeah yeah every time yeah, yeah. honey's really likable she yeah. is and really likable that's the thing you know her her aura it's like it's really welcoming yeah. and it's really like uh, you know people don't have their guard up around honey because she's so she, she's so nice she's smiling on stage it looks like she want to be there yeah and it looks like she's like she's funny you know it when you see her like she's funny mm. she's having fun we're gonna have fun with her yeah. yeah so it's all smiles and i i you know i really learned from that because i think uh uh, I also uh, go up on stage and I was like, I'm going to be a welcoming guy. Yeah. <laughs> and I try, you know, make that help me. Yeah. yeah. Do you get any goodwill from your crutches? <laughs> uh, yeah, I get a little bit of goodwill. Like I have an opening joke about like being on the crutches and then yeah. that really helps. So, but it doesn't, you know, I, I feel like it kind of like, it helps a little bit, but it it's not going to like, no. it's not going to rescue out of like some fucking... <laughs> sexist jokes exactly so but uh, did, did you hey, think, i'm on yeah. crutches do you think that, like <laughs> could yeah. you try walking on stage like timmy from south park yeah <laughs> like just going out like this telling the worst sex sexist jokes ever and yeah. see if it works and like, yeah. it's okay i'm a cripple oh sorry i forgot a bit about the joke oh, okay i forgot this is okay. maybe the worst bit yeah i forgot the worst bit about the joke Late on me. it was that like uh oh you know what the person that i'm most disappointed in is ken like fucking Ken. What a <laughs> cuck. He just goes around simping for Barbie. He needs to watch some Andrew Tate videos, fly that bitch to Romania, steal a passport and put her in front of a webcam. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my lord. Yeah. I can see why that <laughs> Media, what That's... the fuck? Yeah. I know. I know. But like in 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 my in... This is a first price Joe Rogan <laughs> shit. Yeah. In in my like logic in creating that joke, yeah. it wasn't like anti woman. It, it was, was more like anti it was it was pro <laughs> it was it was anti it was anti Barbie. Yeah. yeah. And that's what I thought I could get away with. I thought I could get away with like fucking attacking Barbie. Yeah. Not attacking women. But it got fucking like you know, misinterpreted to be this like fucking sexist, and I get it, I get it, but it was yeah. uh. Yeah, but it's weird though because it's ballsy. Yeah, it's ballsy. <laughs> <laughs> but it's weird how you can you know have that feeling that you're super sexist and nobody laughs because of that. Uh, but the night before, you're, you know, standing yeah. ovation. Yeah, and standing you know what, ovation. It's weird, and you know what somebody said to me the night before? They go, "Oh man, the Barbie bit is really clever because you're really like you're attacking Barbie." You're not like attacking women. It's mm. like you're really like you can you can go as hard as you want. It's just a doll. Yeah. It's just a yeah. doll. You can't go as hard as you want because like even just saying that like Ken should watch Andrew Tate videos, take Barbie to Romania and put her in front of a webcam. That's pretty fucked up. Yeah, that's pretty fucked up. But I it's agree. with a character that doesn't exist. Yeah. So that was my logic. But it didn't get communicated clearly enough and it became this like, oh, that's what you think you should do with women. Or you support Andrew Tate. And I just got <laughs> lumped in with that toxic masculinity yeah. <laughs> persona. Yeah. And then that was it. It was all over. Wow. All Did you over. go to Hustlers University again? Yeah, dude, I, you know what? <laughs> this, you know what? This is how the joke actually ends. With yeah. the, with the, I was like, he should put Barbie in front of a webcam and show her who the top G is. <laughs> Something <laughs> stupid like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. West Side. Yeah, I can see how that, you wow. know, depending on your, on your energy, it could be really funny or yeah. just really sexy. You're right, you're right. Because the energy thing was, that's what Penilla said yeah. as well. The energy thing was like, I can't really move around too much because I'm on crutches. So then I couldn't like be like like theatrical and communicate that it was like comedy. Yeah. It just sounded yeah. like a fucking rant from some like sexist white dude. <laughs> yeah. Cis male, some cis male rant. Yeah, first prize Joe Rogan, dude. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> i don't know like Burnt the... crisp. <laughs> no yeah. but uh what's your like uh, stand-up you know plan or do you have any goal by doing stand-up now yeah i just want to be like as uh i want to create like really good bits like really good bits that's a good plan 
isn't it? Yeah. It's a good plan. Like plan. And it's like I had Yonis Yusuf in here, yeah. and he talked a lot about bits. He was like going like, yeah, the most important thing for when they were coming up was not who somebody was, but what bits they had. And they would always go, oh, uh, this guy has this bit. This guy has that bit. And there's not as much of an emphasis on that anymore. It's more like, oh, he's like really good comedian. He's a cool comedian. So I want to try to like just craft bits that like you can go, oh, yeah, that's a sick bit. Yeah. That's a really clever, smart, funny bit. I like that way of thinking because it revolves more around the comedy and not the person. Because we tend to glorify, you know, a lot of people because they're they're moving up really quickly or they're on television or yeah. have this podcast or this or that. Yeah, and, and it's uh, we forget that it's like we all write jokes and it's about the jokes. Yeah, I, I like that way of thinking. Me too. Yeah, and it just kind of makes me realize that like that's placing so much more emphasis as well on the writing part yeah. because I placed a lot more emphasis on performing. You know, just trying to be like confident on stage and trying to remember my lines and how to like move and how to emphasize a, a bit through stage presence. Yeah. And I put too much emphasis on that. And now I'm trying to place more emphasis on the actual structure yeah. and writing of a joke. Mm. And ironically, that is what I spent the last fucking two days doing with that like whole long Barbenheimer Barbie bit. But it was too like... You know, you just miss the mark sometimes. And it was like the second time I've done it. So you got to kind of like, you really do yeah, need to test shit out over and over and over and over yeah, and over again. Different audiences, different stages. Yeah. yeah. So that's my goal. Like I, I want to like do like really good bits. And then I want to just kind of like go, oh, have you heard any of bit about fucking whatever extreme sports week or about this or about that and, yeah. and get known as like a great joke writer. Because when I look up to people that like, I go, oh, that's a, he's a really, really good joke. Like Anthony Jeselnik, for example. Yeah. His bits are so good. And like, they're really like, you could really boil them down to like 60 seconds, 90 seconds, some of the jokes. And you go, wow, that's really clever. Mm. I like the one where he goes, uh, I always, uh, uh, for, for, for Christmas, I asked my girl about an Xbox. All I wanted was an Xbox, you know, nothing else. An Xbox start and end of the list. And when I opened the gift from her, it was a framed picture of the two of us together. <laughs> but it's okay, because I got her an Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's a clever, he's a clever joke writer. Yeah, I really like it. yeah, yeah. I like it too. So, th th and like, I feel like so many things start with writing. Like, yeah. whether it's like, uh, you know, what else I want to do, man? I, I really, I'm kind of like working on this kids book at the moment. Oh, really? really? Yeah. Cool. yeah, 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 yeah. I'm working on like a kids book. What's the? I don't want to say too much about what it's about, but it's like I read Barbie. To, it's about Barbie. <laughs> it's about why she's a cunt <laughs> and about why we need more webcams. <laughs> no, but it's like I read so many books to my son who's six now, and he likes these rhyming books. And I'm a big, uh, you know, like a- Dr. Seuss and stuff? In, uh, yeah, Dr. Seuss is like a little bit more complex for him. He, he's oh, more yeah. like, uh, you know- Stupid? Yeah, he's very stupid. <laughs> <laughs> he's so dumb. So it's like stupid a- little shit. It's it's a book about like uh, it's just a rhyming book okay, about yeah. some shit. Okay. Mulvarpen som för att finna ett som Barsha. Yeah, kind of that kind of yeah. stuff. Do you have that in Australia? Yeah, the Did mole that sh just looking for sh shit on the twats. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I think that would be pretty cool. So yeah. now my emphasis is just on writing, writing, okay. writing, writing, writing. Yeah, writing. Okay, cool. So I'd I'd like to do that. That's a cool yeah. project. It is yeah. a cool project. Yes. You know, in Australia, I keep an eye on like what's happening comedically in Australia. Yeah, comedians are writing a lot of books. Oh, really? Oh my god! So yeah. much money. There's so, there's so much fucking money in kids' books, by the way. Oh, there is. If you, dude, if you go to a fucking bookstore, have a look at, pick up like a copy of Carson and Petra. It's like three hundred kronas. No. Yeah. For real. Yes. yes. Yeah. It's so expensive. Like I don't buy books for my kid anymore because no. we just go to the library and just run a bunch of them and yep. read them and then return them. Yeah, it's genius. But if you if you bought books from a bookstore, they are fucking not cheap, man. And no. they're like they're twenty years old. Yeah, exactly. you know what I mean, and wow. they're like they still like three hundred kronas, yeah. two seventy five, one seven, whatever it and is. And it's reprint number Whoa. five thousand in the thirtieth language. Yeah, like exactly. they're not written in Norwegian; they're written in like French or English, and then translated a bunch of times. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. But I, I think it's a, a dream for a lot of people to make children's books. Mm. I feel like you can, no matter who you talk to, they always have you know this idea about a children's book mm. uh, because it's so relatable too. And it seems easier than writing a novel. <laughs> so much easier. Yeah. I think it's it's easier, yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
But I think the like I think the hook with a kid's book might actually be like the drawings as well, uh, like the artwork, right? Like if you show a kid like a look at this caterpillar eating its way through a leaf or whatever yeah. it is like it's kind of cool with the hole in the pages and exactly. you know what i mean like that concept yeah yeah I, I, i've been dreaming about you know uh illustrating a children's book oh really yeah it's oh, true shit. Yeah. Yeah. i studied uh, children's book huh let's make a travel of children's book yes. <laughs> yeah no but yeah but, uh, i studied illustration uh some years ago and you know it's it's just this cozy, this uh, small illustrations, and it's it looks easy, but it's hard too, you know. Mm. Uh, we have like four or five huge, great il- illustrators in Norway, and it's really hard to make money of that shit. So I, yeah, I, I didn't continue doing it, but yeah, but it's a, but it's a dream, you know. It's um, I've been I've been drawing for uh, you know gifts and in, in um, when people get married, yeah, and so on, and that's fun, but it's you know it's hard to live. Off. So you're a graphic designer or an illustrator or what's uh, the... Yeah, it's not a protected title. So no. yeah, I guess I am. Yeah, I'm the graphic designer in Vrub. He's uh, really talented. Yeah, yeah, yeah so really good. Yeah, yeah, okay, so you're like really good with like uh, Adobe Illustrator and... Yeah, Illustrator, Photoshop, Premiere Pro even, you yeah, know. Yeah, uh, yeah. I try to be good at, you know, like Blender too. Mm, that's hard. Ooh, that's fucking hard, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, I really struggle struggle with that shit, but it but it's fun and I think it's important to know a lot of different you know programs like that yeah. if you try to get to make any money in that business because mm. you have to be a potato you know. Did have you seen the? You probably have. You've seen the uh, Adobe Photoshop update with the generative fill. Yeah, the um, with the like Firefly or something. No, Fire- f- I think Firefly is for Premiere, but okay. for Photoshop, it's the. Uh, you know, like if you just use the lasso tool yeah. and I can go like, look, I'll put the lasso tool around the wall and go like add a picture here or make a background there, or put a city size. Like that's pretty crazy. It's crazy. Or like if I take a photo yeah. of like a guy sitting in a locker room and then I go generative fill and like just it fills out the locker room with like more people or whatever you want. Yeah, exactly. You can just uh, write, put this guy in a forest. Yeah. And he's in a forest instead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. You don't have to do shit. Nah, it's really, really, really interesting. Yeah. And like with Firefly as well, like the Premiere update, like you can like generate uh, storyboards and like moving animation. It'll find B-roll for you, add music, just say add sound effect here. And it just does it. Yeah. Like it's, it's crazy. It's revolutionary. It really is. It's yeah. a game. I don't like using the word game changer a but lot, it but it is. Yeah. Like it really is. Okay. Like I could turn this studio, I could just mask around you and then make you sitting in like fucking wherever. Like this could be on a beach or something. Yeah. I started to read the book uh, by Inga Strumke, um, The Maschiner som Tenker. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and it's it's a great book. And she talks a lot about how AI. It's it's not gonna you know uh, destroy us like in Terminator or anything. It's a tool. It's a really powerful tool that's gonna make a lot of you know what what you do. It's gonna make it a lot easier. Mm. But it's also gonna make you you know you won't have you, you won't need five people in five years. You, you're just gonna need yourself. You know. Yeah. Probably because it's gonna you know, make your life so much easier. Yeah. But then again, it's so much easier for uh, so many people. Yeah, I- even with things just like texting. Yeah. Like, have you seen like, you know, when you just add the auto captions on like YouTube or something, you just have add the captions. And yeah. It nails it. Yeah. Like, it's really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, it's, it's, it, I'm pretty excited about like the future with AI and stuff like that. Like I have, uh, you know, like a pretty positive outlook. I also think that it can go wrong, like in the wrong hands. And like, if you get like a, you know, nefarious actor like North Korea in charge of some fucking quantum computer, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Like it can go pretty bad. Yeah, you're fucked. Yeah, yeah, then you're fucked. But I also like the idea of like, okay, you can use the tools to create something. Like, let's say, for example, if you could like say to AI, make me a movie using Unreal Engine 5 about a fucking this ending of Star Wars or something. That's kind of dope. Yeah, it you is. You know what I mean? It is. And uh, I see a lot of uh, content creators on TikTok and Instagram Instagram using it. Yeah. You know, just uh, there's this guy. I don't know what what's a, it's a Norwegian guy who makes uh, kind of funny pictures on Instagram yeah. by uh, politicians and so on. He give them, gives them curls, in a, you know, 
on their in their hair instead of you know what they usually have on their head <laughs> yeah, yeah but but it, it's really funny and he used to do it uh, with photoshop now it's just using ai and it's 10 times better than what he used to do wow so he just yeah. uses mid journey and says yeah. this politician add curls to the hair or whatever yeah or you know a pacifier in their mouth and it's it's no problem it's real good and the lighting is great you know it's uh, it's game. yeah i'm looking forward to it you know what you can do as well with stuff like that you can say like use this camera use this lens in yeah. the style of this photographer yeah with this lighting at golden hour 100 percent, and it nails it yeah and you can just you know you have what three cameras here yeah you just put it into uh, adobe premiere and you say like i want the camera to be on the person person who's talking yeah and firefly is like blah, 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 beep, bop, 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 and you have it mm. for like 10 seconds there is a tool that you can do that now. Oh, okay. It's it's called Autopod, but you got to you got to pay like uh, four hundred kroners a month or something for it. But I well, think I think it's gonna I think it's gonna come with the yeah. a Premiere update. Yeah, I know that um, uh, Wolfgang V. He has this kind of automated thing where you know the person who's talking, the camera just switch mm. to that person. Mm. That's also really smart. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's really good. I yeah. was going to use the autopod thing, but I end up like, I just do it. I just do it like a multicam edit because yeah. I watch the clips and then I make a trailer out of it. Yeah, exactly. But if you're not doing that, like that's the way to go. How's your podcast doing? You know, where we are right now. How yeah. How's it doing? You know, you, you do a lot of Instagram reels and so on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's doing well. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I just measure the success of the podcast by the enjoyment that I have by doing it. Yeah. That's the only thing that I care about. I, I, it really is. Like, I'm lucky that I can get like good guests, like you guys and Vigo and Yonis and stuff yeah. like that. <laughs> that people want to do the podcast. Uh, but I, uh, I don't want to fall into the trap of saying, "Oh, I don't want to have a conversation with this guy because uh, you know he doesn't have enough uh, fucking TikTok followers." So I don't want to, you know, yeah. oh, oh, he's not going to generate. I don't want to ever fall into that. Like, no. you know, I feel like. I want to just talk to the people that I want to talk to and that's it, you know, because that's what I enjoy doing. Yeah. So I don't, I'm not numbers based. I don't look at the numbers. I don't care about the numbers or anything like that. Maybe like, you know, that's, I feel like once you go down that route and yeah. then you start trying to twist things to be a particular direction that it'll actually alter the path that I just really want to take. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah. It's like with the uh, right now. We shouldn't be looking at numbers. We should just have fun until uh, the numbers matter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And I I've spoken to like a few bigger like big podcasters about how they do it, and they're the same way. Yeah. Like some of them, they're like, you know what? Especially this one guy who's pretty popular. He says that like he he gets offered commercial things all the time and he just doesn't it's like i don't want to do that no it's really. like i just want to keep it like pure and once you start adding money and things into things it kind of changes the essence of what it is and that's what people like in the first place yeah okay yeah so you know i'm just really happy to do the podcast i really enjoy doing it and i learn so much yeah like, so much you know what i mean like uh i just ask people about things that i'm interested in and then they tell me and then i go huh <laughs> Wow. I can add that to my library of knowledge. Yeah. The power of conversation. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. 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 Tell your six year old. Yeah. Who do you want to have on? Like your dream guest. My dream guest? You can pick from the top shelf in here. Alive or dead. Alive or Tupac. No, I don't I don't know, man. I don't really know. He's, he is. He is alive. He's alive. <laughs> He's alive. On, uh, I, an island with Elvis, I heard. Yeah. yeah. Whoa. You know, I, I just, you know, I like, I like, I don't know. I don't really have an answer for that, man. I just, you know, I, I like, I don't really have a very structured booking system either. Like I see you at the gym and yeah. you're like, hey, what about we do a podcast? I'm like, that's a great idea. Yeah. I saw Inia doing a uh, bench. Really? Swole as fuck, <sighs> by the way. Yeah, I was lifting so much. Yeah, dude, what are you benched? You're huge. No, I don't know. It was, uh... It was Skidoo Bank. What's that in... Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was incline? the in, it was incline. The incline. Yeah, yeah, the incline. I, I can't remember what it was, yeah. but uh, yeah, it was sixty. I saw it. Sixty <laughs> kilos. That's that's a good. Uh, that's a good weight in the incline. Yeah, it was it good. But Incline's hard. It's top chest. It's it is. It's top chest. But I like that we're training. Yeah, that's that's good. And I saw you there with Robert. And yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. it was very fun. But, it was. But that's what like I just like I try to let the podcast be as organic as possible. And like I just I saw him there yeah. joking around. Okay, hey, you want to do a podcast? 
and go, how about fucking tomorrow? And then, then we just do it. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? It's fun. Yeah, I like it. I like it. And like sometimes people write to me and they go, hey, can I be a guest on the podcast? And I know nothing about them. Oh. Like absolutely nothing about them. And I go, yeah, that's fine. And I don't research them at all. And then I just discover who they are on the show. Yeah. yeah. So exactly. I like just doing it like that. It was really fun seeing you at the gym. Yeah. You, you were at like the mirrors and uh, like sitting down doing biceps curls. Fuck yeah. I was like, there he is. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's right. I spotted you yeah, in, in the, the mirror. mirror. In the mirror. Because I was standing there with my arms crossed, just nodding respectfully <laughs> yeah uh, your godlike biceps damn yeah, yeah. You're working really hard dude man. i'm working hard how I, much did you curl that day i, I with can't your arm it, i don't know it, it, it was probably a gazillion it was like all of the all of the weights yeah so all they, of the weights. they had to bring up like some yeah fucking excuse me do you work here yeah do you have some heavier weights <laughs> that's what i need yeah <laughs> that's what i need <laughs> that's great dude but it was good it was nice seeing you and robert there yeah. and uh, i think mutt wants to come and start working out too yeah so, he, he does yeah yeah that's yeah. great i know right it's really fun because inia inia went over to like this random guy he's always there i see him all the time and he was like hey can you take a picture for me and my friends <laughs> and first I, th i thought you said fans and i was like <laughs> what the fuck yeah, but then we and then you made us flex and we were all standing there like flexing and then you put it on instagram and then you followed up with like a like a picture of a puddle on the floor and you were like this is your girl when she sees us working abs and i was like <laughs> I was going to repost, but now I'm not. <laughs> I was like, That's typical in you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow, I see. Okay, I just want to bring this up because I see a lot of your stories. Mm. And they're like, because you're a father. Yeah. And then you put like this one story out. It was like a couple of days ago. Like, what's your favorite porn star or something? Yeah, yeah. As a <laughs> reference for a bit. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So I was like. What is he doing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, because I had a bit and I was oh. like, I, I don't know, like, if I say, like, uh, Sasha Gray or Jenna Jameson or Lana Rhodes, like, who? Never heard about him. Exactly, no. exactly. I actually changed the bit. Yeah. I, okay. I, I changed it to Barbie. <laughs> yeah. But, um, <laughs> Bobby. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but, it, but, but do you think I, yeah. about what you post on, like, uh, social media? Because a lot of, a lot of it can be like, I, I would be embarrassed by some of it. I yeah. think it's hilarious. But, yeah. uh, I, I have, like, this mental, uh, Spider disorder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's called being a fucking loser. You know what, yeah. man? That's a really good question. Yeah. And like, what I'm kind of like working with myself, like on a personal level, yeah. is just not caring what other people think. No, because yeah. that's and really hard. I, I, it is so hard. Yeah. It's so hard. And like, guest after guest after guest after guest always says the same thing. They always say like, you know what? I fucking was really concerned about what other people thought, and that was getting in the way of my happiness. And I was second guessing and. And I'm like, you know what? I don't give a fuck. I just gotta, I do give a fuck, but I gotta be like less of giving a fuck. So sometimes if I'm putting something like that out there, I'm yeah. just like, you know what? I don't care what you think. I'm just gonna post it. Okay. Who gives a fuck? Yeah. Cause I would uh, not post that. Cause I'm really scared <laughs> of what people think most of the yeah. time. I'm trying to work on it. It's a big hurdle. Yeah, it like, is. It, it, I mean, like what that post was, was as a reference for a comedy bit. Yeah. Who's the most famous porn star that you know? Yeah. That was it. Mm. So I don't think that, like, would, so you wouldn't post that? No, I wouldn't. Because really? uh, my mom follows me. Everyone I know follows me. Yeah. And I would be like, I'm, that's embarrassing. Because me. they think that you're going to do a joke about a porn star? Yeah, something like that. I tried to do dirty jokes once and it doesn't work at all. Yeah. No. I'm, I don't have that persona. No, you don't look like a guy who talks dirty. <laughs> no, right? Right? Yeah. So I tried to do it, and then I bombed. And mm. my cousin actually came to Oslo. That was last year in Oslo Humorfest. I was doing Frisk, uh, nah, the, you know, the Utfordrene. And I had this uh, dirty bit, and uh, it bombed, like, so hard. What was the bit? Uh, it was about, you know, there was this um, NRK documentary uh, about... Uh, porn or something like that and then uh, when they you know uh, titled the people it said uh, porno utöver mm. and then I like uh, uh, did some comparisons to like sports mm. and uh, it was not good no <laughs> and my cousin watched it it was her first time seeing me doing stand up and it was not great and I felt so much shame afterwards it was horrible and i feel it now in my body as i'm talking yeah. about it but was that because of the topic or because of the construction it of was the both the topic and then failing at making it funny then yeah. it's just like awkward yeah uh, yeah yeah and that yeah. i bury myself down in the hole yeah you know? i but understand it, but if it was funny and everyone was laughing do you, would you 
Stable thing you could say? No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what about what about if it was like a different like generic topic like vanilla ice cream, but it still failed? Would you? No, still... then I wouldn't feel shame because it was vanilla ice cream. Okay, so it was the topic, and it yeah, was and mostly failing. the topic. Uh, maybe the, the topic of porn. The, yeah, it sounds like it. Yeah. Ha. Ah. So just embarrassing at bombing with such a you know, yeah, kind of awkward topic. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. 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 yeah, but you know what? I like exploring topics like that. Because I, oh, yeah. I like, you know, like that's, that's like, I like exploring this forbidden, like, ooh, we shouldn't, you know, like I'll talk about porn, like I'll talk about like uh, whatever it is, like, yeah. you know, drug use or like Murka Shellen is like, I think a great show that I would love to do. Yeah. But okay. like, I think that like what's really important to kind of understand as comedians is that like uh, not every uh, audience is a fan of yours. You know what I mean? Like exactly. sometimes yeah. you have like really like last night, like there was three tables in the beginning in front. Mm, they went into it. One table in the middle. They were into it. Yeah. So like that's that's kind of like important to understand as well. And what I kind of struggle with is like how, you know, where do you like how do you read the room versus be true to yourself yeah. kind of thing as well. And I feel like that's uh, what I talked about with Hani as well, because when you go on stage, what is the thing people you know, assume of you, right? Mm. So when I walk on with my energy, uh, personally, I think people like think that that's a, like a positive, happy type. Mm. Like Pete Holmes. Do you know Pete Holmes? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. That sort of guy. Yeah. He, he doesn't have like a lot. He has some, but he doesn't have a lot of dirty jokes. Mm. Right. So, uh, so I think it's all about just figuring out what type of comic you are. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's, it's good for something. Mm. Always, if you bomb, you learn something. Yeah, you totally. Fix it, and then you just move on, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but it, it's really c cool to know as well that like there are like I think it's always important to understand is that like, and this is such like a cliche thing to say, but like that different styles of comedy are for different people. Yeah, like that yeah. is so fucking true. Yeah, you know it what is. I mean. It and is. and sometimes it's like, you know what I notice, man? I I notice that like outside of Ringtre. It's a completely different audience. Yeah, it is. It's 100%. completely it's so, different audience. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. why some comedians can't uh, be in Oslo. Yeah, some comedians just you know sell out uh, from Ringtre and outwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It but is. you know what I'm gonna start trying to do? I think, man, I'm gonna start like labeling my sets with like a kind of like a rating. Do you know what I mean? Like this yeah. is R-rated set. <laughs> this yeah, is yeah. a PG-13 set. Yeah, you know what I mean. I feel like that's a good kind of indication to have. Just to be like, okay, this is a set I'm doing inside of, like, let's say if I ever did a spot at Latte. Yeah. Like, there's no way I'm going to do that fucking Barbie shit. No. But he'd be like, okay, now now you're going to do like, okay, I'm from Australia. My Norwegian's yeah. really, you know, like, make yeah. sure it's like P PG friendly. Oh, they, they love that shit. They, you know? eat, they eat it oh, up. A foreigner talking about Norway. Wow. There you go. Oh, we can't get enough. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, they, they eat they, it all up. They do eat it they up. Yeah. Cake. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, okay. I, I don't know, man. There's so many like nuanced levels to understanding what it comedy is. is. And like we're all pretty like young in this journey. You know what I mean? So you're just figuring it out as you go yeah. along. Yeah. And I and I, and I notice um, you know, by social media. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of people who, you know, see the same comedians and it's so much it, it's such different, you know, opinions on the different comedians that's that uh, get well known on social media. Mm. But at the same time, you can't, uh, social social media just shows you everything. And you have to, you know, you, you don't know if uh, a comment in the comment section is by a 13 year old. You can't, you, you know, if, if you put out something and you get a, a negative comment, you don't know who they are. If a 13 year old uh, boy comes up to you and say something shitty about you, you know, you have this filter. You can, mm. you know, it's, it's a 13 year old, I don't give a fuck. But if you get in a com get it in a comment section, you're like, "Fuck, that hurts, dude." Yeah, I don't like that. So that also kind of uh, you know stops me from uh, putting out uh, a lot of you know shit on my personal social media because yeah. I think it's kind of hard just to you know I know that I as soon as you do that you 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 put your ha head out there and yeah. it's hard to you know you have to be able to uh, cope with uh, with people who don't like it. Yeah. And I think that's a part of like being vulnerable. Yeah. And I think that's a part of like not caring what other people think. Yeah. And that's a hard thing to do as well. Because I know what it's like. People write shitty things or stuff like that. And like it fucking hurts, man. Yeah, it's it does. Like, it's not a switch that you can just turn off. You know, but but but, uh, but if it's uh, some loser on the street that tells you that. Shut up, idiot. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because yeah. you have this filter. 
Yeah. And social media, you don't have that filter. It's just user 619-6969. Yeah, 420. Like, 420, dude. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and you're like, okay, that hurts, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but like, I feel like now I think that it's really important to post things on social media. Hundred percent. Like, I think that like, if you're not posting, com- and then that's the thing I noticed with the podcast as well. Like, I, if I look at my like Instagram feed, it's podcast, 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 and I'm like, oh shit, I gotta post some comedy stuff. <laughs> and uh, that's what Yonis said as well. It's like you get a lot of comedians that are just posting crowd work, and they're doing crowd work for content. It's like yeah. content based crowd work, mm-hmm. and that's that's like you know that's that's if that's your thing, like whatever. But like, what about posting like a good, well-crafted bit? What about crafting something, like posting something, like, oh shit, you know, like th- that's a good bit, put it out there. Yeah. So that's kind of like the direction that I think I want to go in. Yeah, I've seen you done sketches as well. Oh yeah, I love the sketches. Yeah, yeah they're funny. I love yeah. doing the sketches. A sketches is like one of my favorite things to do. Yeah, yeah you should do more. I would love to do more. Yeah. 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 I love I love doing them, man. And like, uh, yeah, just the video sketches. It's like, it's just like I, my philosophy when I'm doing like a video sketch is like, can I get like five jokes per minute? Like I'm really working on the per minute count. Like I want to start quick, yeah. like with the premise. The premise is pretty easy. Yeah. And then it's joke, 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 joke. And how many can you squeeze into that 60 seconds or that yeah, nine yeah. seconds? And exactly, I think that's yeah. a real art form as well. Yeah, yeah, it is. Short format comedy sketches yeah. on Instagram, TikTok. Yeah. It's really, it's really buzzing. It is, man. You know what? I resisted TikTok for like the longest time. Yeah. And then I just downloaded it. And there are so many funny people on TikTok with yeah. their own sticks that yeah. I go, I never heard of you. No, You're right. fucking hilarious. Yeah. yeah. And then you kind of lose faith in yourself sometimes it, yeah. by seeing so many yeah. talented people. You're like, fuck. I know. And they're not yeah. comedians. Yeah, no, right. You never see them on stage. They, ne- they don't do stand up. Yeah. yeah. We, we talked with uh, Henrik Schattwed, uh, Schattwed yesterday. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And he's big on TikTok. Mm. Uh, but his friend, Olivier, He's got a hundred k more followers on TikTok, mm. but he doesn't do stand up. No, right? Yeah. So it's like you know, really funny, great people on social media. A lot of them just don't do stand up either. But you know, it's not not ever not everybody wants to do stand up. Not every no. funny person wants to do stand up. No, but, but you can be a comedian still, still, right? Yeah. I think so. I, I think I think yeah. the term comedian just applies to anybody that does humor. Yeah, yeah it makes people right? laugh. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And do you think about like some of these people that don't do stand up that are posting things on TikTok? Yeah. They're getting hundreds of thousands of views. Yeah. yeah. Like imagine if that was like a show. That'd be like fucking Ullaval Stadium or something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Hundred thousand. That's way more than. Yeah, Ullaval it's like <laughs> three, Ullaval, <laughs> three nights at Ullaval. Yeah, yeah. So like, if you're like, that's what I understand now about like posting more content is. Because the reach that you have for communicating comedy is amplified. Yeah. And that is really important as well. Yeah. It is. And yeah. <laughs> you know, it's funny how we can sit here and talk about it. Uh, that that it's really buzzing with the internet. But yeah. we sound like boomers just yeah. because, you know, it's been buzzing for like, what, 10 years already. I'm yeah. going to say it. The internet is here to stay. It's never uh, gonna take off. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. But internet with colors? I yeah. don't. I don't believe in no it. Way. Colors? <laughs> wow. But, but that's the thing too about like, because I, I feel this, and it sounds like maybe you might as well. And I know a lot of comedians do. Is they feel like their comedy isn't worth posting. They feel like, oh, I didn't nail that bit, or I don't know if I want to post that bit, or I don't want to put that bit out there. Yeah. And I talk to like a lot of people that have they film every fucking set and they don't post anything. Yeah. You know I have I mean? a lot of films. I've never posted anything from my stand-up. Exactly. And why is that? Uh, laziness. Laziness? I think so. I don't want to go through the editing process. Yeah, but is it also because you go, oh, no, I don't want to look of... at myself no, or I don't no, want to no. post it or anything? I usually look at my set or listen to my set afterwards just yeah. to like, you know, get better or listen to what, what worked and what didn't. Mm. Uh, sometimes I do it. Sometimes I don't. You know, uh, but uh, for posting, I, I have a lot of things I know I can post. It did well, some crowd work, some bits, something uh, that I can post. But I just don't because I don't have the editing uh, or I do. But I'm just lazy. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. yeah. OK, so it sounds like there's a bunch of different reasons why people don't post stuff. Yeah, but right. comedians are notoriously bad at posting shit, like yeah. my, myself yeah. included. Like the yeah. only reason that I'm like doing I feel like the podcast clips are like they're pretty good to put up. Yeah, they are. They're but nice. like thank you but like if you like 
I want to do fucking stand up bits. Yeah. Like I want to post stand up bits. And another thing that comedians always say is like, oh, I don't want to burn through the bit. Yeah. If I post the bit, I can't do the bit. And I just want to think. I just think I understand that there's an element of truth to that. But how many fucking followers do you have? <laughs> yeah, oh, exactly. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like, oh, you're yeah. fifteen hundred followers. Yeah. Like they're gonna like come to every single one of your shows. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's not happening. People who come to the shows don't usually follow the comedians at no. all. They, they don't even don't, know because they've been like uh, so yeah. many of my friends have come to shows. Yeah, and like you do two, three shows every fucking week. Yeah. You're gonna run out of friends yeah. to come to shows. Uh, yeah, you know what I mean. Really yeah. Yeah. yeah, real soon. Yeah. Yeah. You know, over years and years and years. Yeah. And like, oh, okay, oh, you got a couple of new jobs, whatever. Yeah. Just no problem. I yeah. want to post sketches. That's that's actually what I want to do. I I don't really feel like posting my material. Uh, I could, but it it doesn't. I, I don't think about that as much. I I think about sketches all the time though. Mm. But uh, for the same reason, I I have a bunch of uh, you know scripts for sketches. Never done them. Mm. Uh, never filmed them or anything. It's just like I I think I need you know people to work with filming my sketches. You know I I uh, deleted TikTok because mm. I spent a lot of time just scrolling mindlessly. Yeah. While at the can or in bed or at the couch, you know, wasting a lot of time. So I felt like less productive, but I sh I don't know if I should have, you know, deleted it. I could have made a lot of content. Yeah, you can. You know, I know Henrik. He just put something out and it doesn't uh, return to TikTok for like one to two days. Mm. Yeah, just because you know you don't want to. You, yeah, that's smart. Yeah, but I also think that's, the that's stress enough. of like. You know, we just talked about caring what people think. And it's like, a, it's a mental hurdle, you know? Just, you know, posting something and and not caring. That's yeah. So, you know, the selfie videos, talking to the camera, talking to your followers. I've done that twice, mm -hmm. just promoting for, you know, the show we did, uh, we did at the Oslo Humor Festival. That's the first time I've done it ever. Mm -hmm. And I was really stressed about it. Yeah. And I did it. <laughs> yeah. And I was talking to Matthias like, oh, I did that. And he was like, <laughs> yeah, that's unlike you. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's yeah, it is, but but I know you can do it. It's just doing it enough times. It, it it's just the same with yeah. the stand up. Yeah, you just have to do it, yeah. and then it gets easier for each time you do it. Yeah, yeah. It feels really awkward though, just talking yeah. to your phone. I get really it. Does. Yeah. yeah, I I I I'm like the same way, man. Yeah. You know, I got a couple of videos that I was thinking about doing where I'm just talking to the camera. Yeah. But it, you know, it's like a kind of like a, you just got to do it. Yeah, but uh, exactly. it's a it's another thing. Like it, for me at least, it always comes down to like that, like caring about what other people think and yeah. posting something and then you'd be like ah oh, i don't know should i have done that so that's why like at least i'm trying to make moves in that direction to just care less about what other people think yeah. and that is like you know that is hard but if you can really crack that and if you just go you know what i'm gonna fucking talk to the camera i'm gonna post this i'm gonna make yeah. this clip i'm gonna do that i'm gonna post it i'm not gonna fuck whatever yeah. That is such a flex. That's why dumb people, dumb people get further than smart people in something. Because <laughs> they just, they're too dumb to care what other people think. Like, oh, fuck, whatever. Uh, 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 fuck, we're too intelligent to get That's popular. It. That's I'm the watching, problem. <laughs> I'm watching Ted Lasso right now. I, I love it. I've seen it. I so love good. it too. So I've, I've binged the first season. I'm at second season right now. And I've started like two days ago. Uh, anyway, he says, do you know what the, do you know what the happiest animal is? It's a goldfish be the goldfish you know mm. like just move on yeah do exactly. something and just move on yeah but yeah. we do talk a lot about uh, making sketches at yeah Bebel because we have a tiktok uh, account mm. we put out i don't know maybe two videos one or two videos and they're you know it's i noticed that when we try we get more followers and likes and views and so on but it's uh, as we talk about we just have to try we can we can you know uh film the sketches and make some cool videos mm. we just have to you know hype each other's up yeah and actually do it because yeah. i know that we we're, we're two funny guys and we have a lot of funny uh really great people around us so we can do it yeah. i know that we can get popular the, yeah, yeah for made, sure have you made any other sketches than like the one i saw on instagram a couple of months months ago yeah yeah i've made heaps man oh, you I've have made a lot yeah. i haven't seen them Where no do you but have I've, them? I've, I've, some like buried just down on my feed okay yeah, I can. Uh, you know what? I actually made a sketch. Like I made a few sketches like a couple of years ago, and I was gonna post a bunch of them. But then we had the pandemic, and I, I gotta just find that hard drive. But I have a really, I have a really good one yeah. that I think I should. Put, Do you put film them here? Yeah, it's here or, or wherever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. But you know, the thing that I'm noticing about like sketches as well is that like people, you don't really need a lot of equipment. Like it's just like so many sketches yeah. is just like with a phone and like yeah. fucking. It's not like technically advanced at all, especially like. You know, you get this type of sketch where it's one person playing two roles and things like that. And yeah. Like the the entry, the the level for entry is so low. It is. It's so, and I think that's like, 
really important to keep in mind is that you don't need fucking all this technical shit. You can just fucking do it with your phone. Exactly. Yeah. It's with it's just like with a modern art. Mm. You just have to do it. It's not about skill. It's, you just have to do it. <laughs> yeah, look at this banana. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. You just have to do it. Yeah. No, but I um uh no, oh, forget. It. I forgot what I was going to say. Okay. <laughs> but it's modern art, man. Oh, you were going to give a critique on it? postmodern art. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was ready. I was <laughs> shit on art. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, no, dude, I I'm uh Okay, so let, let, let's wrap it up. Let, let's just like let's let's wrap it up with like a kind of short term goal. Like, yeah. what's a short term goal that you have? As Vrevel or personal? Whatever, personal. Okay. Uh, uh, you know, lose five kilos. That's really? Short short. But you look shredded, dude. Yeah, I know. I'm kind of shredded already, but you know, five kilos is gonna make me shredded, dude. No, but a uh, short term. Yeah, maybe maybe like a short term comedy goal or something yeah. like that. Then I think that's uh, everything I do with comedy right now is through Vrevl. Hmm. So, uh, but personal uh, short term uh, comedy goal is just do more stand up. I've been I my the last time I did stand up uh, was at Nure hmm. and I bombed. Yeah, I didn't do any good. Uh, so I was like, kind of, you know, oh, fuck that shit, dude. And then I have, uh, then it's, you know, it's been summer and I haven't been motivated and so on. It's just get back on a horse and ride more and do, do more, you know. Uh, but it, because, you know, I really love stand up. It's so fun, mm. but it's, uh, you just have to do it more. Okay. That's yeah. a good goal. Do yeah, more stand up. Yeah, it is. I like it. Yeah. How about you, bro? Uh, it's doing um more like comedy art forms like mm -hmm. getting input from like different types of uh, comedy so i do improv i love it and um i i'm you know really thinking about doing some musical uh comedy so maybe writing like a song because i play uh, guitar ukulele uh, i sing well uh so I'm, I'm thinking about maybe doing that you know just getting gaining experience from uh, everything you know i love that you said that yeah i love that you said that because one way to really fucking kill it is making a funny song yeah, yeah. and did you look at like what the fox say and like they <laughs> did the super bowl commercial this year that's crazy. i know that's they dropped a that money. a lot of money they dropped that song 10 years ago it got billions of views went all around the world and that's a comedic song yeah yeah the ulvis are like I'm such a fan. I've always been a fan of Elvis. I mm. I love them. I've listened to Ooh Fog. Mm. Do you know they had like a radio show back in like uh, for Petra 2006 and 2008. I've listened to it, you know, twice. Uh, it, it's really funny and everything they do is just fucking great. Yeah, that's good though. Yeah. But I like that direction, man. Yeah, musical comedy. Well, yeah. now I have to say that I want to do more on instagram and tiktok <laughs> i'm sorry Actually, you've yeah, already comedy. had your one goal uh, I'm, okay. I'm, okay i'm just kidding i just kidding. have one goal in my life right now <laughs> no i'm kidding keep going keep going no, so <laughs> no okay more more uh, social media comedy yeah okay yeah. but what does that look like is that like stand up or is that like a sketch no, or? no it's not stand up i i think it's boring to look at stand up at uh, on instagram and tiktok uh, oh yeah, I, yeah that's, a, that's like a, okay you don't like watching the no, bits no I, I think it's i think it's kind of boring uh, sometimes i watch like if it's really short yeah i can watch it but i don't think it's that funny because i like uh, stand up when i when i'm there yeah i think it's hard to watch special sometimes because you know i don't do. I'm not in the room. You can't watch the special oh. by yourself either. It's not the same. No, it's not the, the same. Only, exactly. the, only, the best yeah. way to watch the special is you have to have at least two friends over. Exactly. What? Yeah. No, I yeah. watch the specials alone all the time. Yeah. Oh. I just <laughs> you watch everything alone. I, <laughs> 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 uh, I just had like a Bo Burnham marathon. I watched yeah. all his specials on Netflix. Yeah. I, yeah. I watched yeah. Inside by myself too. But yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, you have to watch that. Uh, that exactly. Yeah. That's yeah. I was like, that, that, that's it. Yeah. Wow. Okay. But you're more genius. Okay. But you said you said that you think that watching stand up on instagram and things like that it's you find it boring yeah it's not it's just not for me i understand yeah okay. so uh, so so you don't want to do you don't want to put that out no. of you doing stand-up you want to no. do comedy in a different type of format and post that yeah i think <laughs> i i think that i'm you know funny as an uh as a person i yeah. think i have a lot of great ideas and i want to you know just make sketches and be more active on instagram and uh and TikTok, just because I think it's, um, you know, it's it's low level, it's low level uh, comedy. 
Yeah. So I just have to, you know, think about that. So I don't want to, you know, have this huge process around yeah. putting something out. Yeah, makes uh, sense. Yeah. So it's, you know, if I ha have an idea, I just want to, you know, film it and put it out there. Yeah, just real basic, really real, easy. Real basic. Yeah. Okay, okay. So that's goal number two. I, I like it, man. We've got to wrap this up because these batteries are about to die. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But uh, I'll, I'll just say that my goal is uh, I just want to write uh, jokes that are like fucking awesome. And you go, oh, that's an Enya James joke. Yeah. yeah. And I want to just get better at stand up. And I want to post more things too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sketches. Maybe we could do a sketch together. Yeah. I'd that'd be love fun. To. Yeah. I'd love that'd be to. super cool. I think that'd be fun. And you know what? I really want to do like more collab projects. I want to do things like, hey, let's do like, wait, let's like, collab. Wait, let's, let's do collab. it. Yeah. Because I think that's the best. And it's yeah. fun. That's, yeah. I want to do more collabs. Yeah. I agree. All right. Thanks, guys, for being on the podcast. Thank you. Thanks, great for episode. Inviting us. Yeah. All right. See you later, everybody. See you, man. Bye. Bye. Bye.